outside of the greenhouse today. It's a beautiful Looks like we're having trouble with the connection. Looks like it's back again though. Uh, I'm outside of the greenhouse and I am outside on a beautiful evening. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our bare root trees. They're right here behind me. And we are focusing on our apples and pears because those are gonna be available this weekend. And I wanna tell you a little bit about what bare root is and what that means maybe for your orchard. So let me switch around here to show you the line up here. So we've got a, quite a few varieties. And bare root basically is a dormant tree uh, that doesn't have any soil. Now we put them in soil, that soil is going to keep those roots moist because you never want bare root trees to run out of, uh, or for their roots to dry out because once they do that, uh, the tree can be a complete loss. So you don't want to do that. But when it comes to bare root, what we do here, you come by, you pick your tree, and you're going to pull it out of the soil. We have bags. Uh, you take the bags and that's going to be what you uh, take them home in. And so taking them home in that, uh, you're going to want to get them in soil pretty quickly uh, just because you don't want those roots to dry out and you also want to get them planted before they bud. Uh, once they start budding, the roots are starting to develop and you can do a lot of damage that way. Uh, if you're someone who uh, really loves to be able to take their tree out, pull it out, put it in the center, walk around it and pick the tree that's perfect size bare root probably isn't the right option for you uh, because the more you move these trees around, the more likely you are to do damage. So we don't want people fussing too much with these. Uh, so you're gonna just basically take out your tree uh, from the soil, put it right in the bag and get it home. Uh, you don't wanna be stomping it on the ground. You don't wanna be uh, doing anything that might damage that root. Uh, so that's that part of it. Now I can tell you a little bit about the varieties that we're gonna have. So I made a list because I will never remember all of them. So there's seven varieties of pears available in bare root. So we have Bartlett, Bosch, Luscious, Parker, Patton, Summer Crisp, and Tawara Asian. Uh, Tawara Asian is a new one for us. It's kind of a cross between, well, it, the taste and shape is a cross between an apple and a pear. So it's a little less pear-like than the others, but it is an Asian pear. Uh, that one, the Parker and the Bartlett, those are self-pollinating. That means if you don't have another pear around, they are gonna produce fruit. Uh, all of, most of the other varieties, with the exception of, say, a kefir, I think, uh, you're gonna need some kind of pollinator that's gonna help it bear fruit. Now, all the ones that are self-pollinating will generally produce more fruit if you have another pollinator, but it has to be a different variety. Uh, so we always recommend you have two. So even if you're getting a self-pollinating uh, variation of pear, it's gonna help you out a lot if you have one that uh, has, a, has another pear pollinator available. Uh, for apples, there's a lot more of those. Right now we have 18 in bare root. Now we carry, I think it was almost 30 varieties of apples normally, so we don't have all those available in bare root, but we do have a, a quite a few varieties, so 18 of them. So there's the Cortland, the Fireside, and the Frostbite. The Frostbite one, those are really small apples. They come late in the season. Uh, it produces quite a few apples. Those are popular for people, especially, they're tasty apples, but uh, people a lot of times like them for the deer because they drop a lot later than some of the other varieties. Uh, we have Fuji, Gala, uh, Harold Red. We have the Honeycrisp. Everybody's asking about the Honeycrisp. We have the Honeycrisp also. Well, we have a, a lot of these varieties uh, in potted versions, but if you wanted the bare root, Honeycrisp is available. Uh, Liberty, Macintosh, Norland, Red Baron, Red Delicious, State Fair, Sweet 16, Yellow Transparent, uh, Wodars, Wolf River, that's another one everybody asked for. That's the one with the giant fruit. Uh, the only thing about a Wolf River is it does take up to five years for it to produce its fruit, but when it does, they're giant. They're like softball size apples. So people a lot of times just like that for the novelty of it. Um, and then the other one is a Zestar. Uh, so apples also need pollinators. So you need two different varieties. And with apples, it's a little trickier in the sense that you want them, that they're gonna send up their blooms or their uh, blossoms at the same time so that the bees and the different pollinators come through they're gonna pollinate each other so we kind of grade them like one two three and four and those are kind of the different bloom times and so you always want kind of an overlapping so a one and two will pollinate each other and a two and a three and a three and a four uh, those all pollinate each other of the varieties that we have so there's only Four of those that are early bloomers, so that's the Norland, the State Fair, Yellow Transparent, and the Zestar. So those are the ones that if you're going to uh, have that kind of apple, 
you're gonna want one of the similar varieties. Usually though, if you have like a Macintosh or one of the mid-blooming varieties, you're covering your bases. So we always say go with Macintosh or something that's you know a reliable, long-blooming mid-season one, and you're you'll hit all your your parts or all your all the different variations. The late ones though, there is one, the Harold Red. So if you have that one, you're gonna need another late bloomer. So it's I know it can be kind of confusing. We do have a chart that we put out there as well, so it helps people. Um, a lot of people will have an apple and they'll say, you know, I planted it, nothing's happened. Well, if you don't have another apple tree within 100 feet, you're not going to get fruit off of it um, because it needs that pollination to happen. And it has to be a different variety. So if you get two honey crisps, they're not going to pollinate each other. So that's a little tricky. Uh, so again, I'm going to give you another peek at the what we have here. So I'm at the top of the hill here. I don't know if you can see that's greenhouse number seven right there. And then the other greenhouses are back behind the trees there. And actually what you're seeing is the roof of the brand new greenhouse that we just put plastic on today. Weather has been very uncooperative, lots of wind or rain uh, every time we tried to put plastic on. So today was the day. So we're happy about that. Anyway, our fruit trees, and that's all we have available right now for uh, bare root. We don't do our maples and a lot of our other trees in bare fruit just because, or in bare root, because uh, it just people don't have as much success with those. Uh, at the fruit trees people have great success with, so we don't want you going home with a tree that you're not going to be able to uh, grow. So these are the different varieties. I'm going to show you something here. All the trees are marked with what's called a paint code. So this one here kind of has a light blue and a pink. And so anytime we see light blue and pink, we know that it's a Liberty apple. Liberty is one of those uh, that needs a pollinator, but it doesn't pollinate anybody else. There's only a couple varieties, and I think Liberty also needs more than one pollinator. Uh, so that's another variety. Um, that's how we can keep track of the trees. So even if they get separated from each other or lose their tags, uh, we can figure out with a lot of the fruit trees what they are. So I've got these over here. They go down to here. Uh, about halfway down, so you got to be at the top of the hill, and then there's a couple more down over there. Um, and then I guess I can show you where the other fruit trees are going to be. So I'm going to walk back down the hill. We have a lot of shrubs right now that are still on pallets. We're probably going to keep them there this weekend. Uh, this is stuff that's just come in. It has been all priced, so you'll be able to figure out what what we've got here. So a bunch of stuff here, and it's going to be a little bit of a walk, but I'll give you the tour. So we do have a lot of the maples and different varieties here. These are uh, the medium and the smaller sizes. Um, a lot of times, though, you know, like if you want the really large ones, those haven't started budding out. We still have them in winter storage, so we're not going to be bringing those out for a couple more weeks yet. So if you're looking for big trees or more mature trees, it's not the way to do it. So there's a peek at the new greenhouse. It's still under construction. It's going to be hard to see from here, but the, the last three rows down there are going to have a couple of our uh, bigger trees down that started budding out. So there's pears in the first row. A little bit up the hill is some uh, plums and then some apples in the first row. But there's not much there right now just because the apples just haven't been ready. But over here, where we usually keep the ornamentals, and some of the ornamentals have been brought out, and they are starting to show some buds. These are some uh, hydrangea trees. And then these are really beautiful. I think these are the red buds, Minnesota strain. So these, let's see if I can get a better, there you go. So these are just starting to bloom out. This is an, is it called esplained or, can't remember it's where they spread it out this has multiple varieties of apples on it so we have a zest star we have well, it's called the hat trick I don't know which variety is on this one this is the honey crisp on it so it has something in the middle it is the sweet 16 I think um, so it has three different apples on one tree and they all pollinate each other as well so that's kind of a nice little little benefit and it's a beautiful tree and the main thing that you do is you kind of keep training them to grow up I think there's, there's videos on YouTube how to keep them pruned properly so that you don't end up with a mess. Um, but they're beautiful trees. Over here are the contender peaches. And they are 
already blooming, so these could potentially have fruit this year, although we don't count on fruit until at least next year. But the contender peaches is the one type of peach that we've consistently had luck with here at Netta's, so that's the only one we're carrying. We've carried many others in the past and they just didn't do the job. Some chestnut crab apple over here, some more plum trees. Some of the plum trees are actually finishing up. Plums are really early bloomers. So we have a lot of apples over here. Uh, we've got a honey crisp very, I think it's down here at the end. Nope, that's Gala. Red Delicious Honey Crisp says right over here. The, oh, that's the Empire. Ginger Gold is the one we didn't have last year, so I'm curious to see how that one fares. And we have the Fireside Apple again. We have, oh, these are the Sentinel Column, Columnar, Column, Columnar, it's there in columns, I guess, in the golden. These are very narrow, so if you have a narrow, very narrow space, these are going to produce fruit on very narrow poles almost, and the fruit's kind of uh, compact and together, so kind of a nice option. If you've got that, we got Red Delicious, we have John of Golds, the Wolf Rivers are over here, oh, i got to get these chestnut trees out of the way. Fuji's, what else? Are Hallareds, more Macintosh, and I think there's Red Baron, and there's also some Lapin Cherries over here. So we have, like I said, more of these uh, in our winter storage, but we haven't brought those out yet, along with a lot of our shade trees and our larger trees. They're just uh, not at the point where we can bring them down quite yet. So it's going to be another two weeks at least before those are going to be available. So let's see. I didn't see questions come up, but if you had some, you're welcome to ask. I hope I catch them. Sometimes when you're live, you can't picture it all. So again, we have all those bare root trees. One thing with bare root to remember uh, is that you do need to get in soil and you do need to water them uh, as soon as they're in the um, ground. You don't want those roots to dry up, but also with bare root, you don't want them, especially with fruit trees at least, they don't like swampy, really wet soil. So if you have an area that gets pooled with water often, or you know springtime it floods, your apples and your pears are probably not gonna do so well there. So up there at the top of the hill, past the piles of pots in the background, sorry that you had to look at that, um, that's where those are gonna be. Um, it's not a bad idea to mix maybe some dairy dew tree and shrub half and half with your soil. That's gonna give it some of the uh, uh, nutrients that it needs. So that's not a bad idea when you're planting those bare root trees to go ahead and uh, give it some. Dairy dew is a good one because it's natural. It's really pretty good for fruit and vegetable and uh, you don't have to worry about it having weird chemicals in it or anything like that. Uh, I'm now here in greenhouse number seven. This is the perennial house right now. Eventually perennials will be going into the new place. We are really stocked really well with stuff right now. So I'll give you a tour of this as well, uh, just because everybody seems to like the perennials. So we've got hostas anywhere we've got shade right now. So there's, they're kind of tucked in everywhere. But we do have lavender, so there's lavender here, lavender up there. We have a little bit of pink lavender. I think we may only have maybe nine of those left. Monarda, which is bee balm. We have four colors of that. So let's go and I'm gonna show you. This is the pink lavender. It is, I think, a zone five. Let me check it before I tell you that. It is zone five, so some people don't have luck with it coming back every year, but it is starting to bloom. And then we have more lavender. These are the tall ones over here. These are same variety, just that they're farther along. Uh, the thing about lavender that people don't realize, it's not a bad idea to keep it trimmed back every a couple times during the season so it doesn't start getting woody. So none of these have any woody branches or anything like that. So if you kind of give it a little haircut every now and then, it's going to keep it from getting those really woody branches that a lot of people don't like on there. I have a poppy blooming. This is the Icelandic poppy. It's the orange one. It also comes in yellow and pink. And that one is an early, early bloomer. I do have some violas going. Delosperma, which is ice plant. Got a couple colors of that. Gallardia is not blooming yet. 
Uh, let's see, Donkey Tail Spur Spurge is kind of a fun one. It's not, it gets a little yellow flower, but it's really more of a kind of ground covery kind of trailing type of thing, which is nice. We don't have a lot of asters. We don't have a lot of columbine. We don't have a lot of the bellflower, but we do have it. Uh, some hollyhocks. Uh, we did get more bleeding hearts, thank goodness. People came to our per, uh, perennial event and were desperate for bleeding hearts. We got a whole pile of them in. We have the red, the old fashioned, and I think the alba, which is the white. So red, white, and pink are the three varieties. And then we have loads and loads of um, our dianthus, which are all starting to bloom. If you kind of keep cutting the dead buds back, these are gonna keep blooming for a while. Same thing with the veronica. We do have a couple hydrangeas. These are bloomstrucks. These are the kind, these are endless summer. Uh, they're gonna go ahead and uh, turn blue. They like morning sun, they don't like hot sun. Sarah Joe, you just asked a question. If I plant apple trees this year, how soon will they get fruit? Some of the uh, trees, depending on their size, if you get a bigger one, like a lot of them that we have, they're gonna have fruit probably this year. Uh, definitely next year. They're pretty quick with that. If you buy a really spindly one, like a lot of people will buy them online and it's, you know, kind of the size of your pinky finger, you can expect a couple years before you're going to see fruit on those. Uh, but usually ours are, are big enough that they, if they don't have fruit this year, they generally have it next year. And that is one of the peony. I love Baptisma. It's really one of those unusual kind of plants. It has these nice little kind of almost coin-like leaves, and then the flowers come up. It only does like a single bloom, but it has really nice foliage. Uh, so it's a nice plant to just have in the yard. These are blooming exceptionally early. These are ones that we planted and wintered ourselves, and they're just so happy in the greenhouse. And for some reason, the climate this year, something's up that they're blooming much earlier than they have in the past. So we have a couple of varieties you're seeing. This one's kind of the brightest yellow. And let me see which one it is. That one is lemon meringue. We do have more of a purple one there. And I think that one is called, sorry, I don't know all the names, a Blueberry Sunday. They all have very tasty names. Uh, pink Lemonade is a little bit lighter yellow. And I think there's at least one other variety. I think there's one with some uh, pink and blue together, or uh, there might be a pink one and there might be a blue and yellow together, but I don't see any blooming yet. Amsonia Storm Cloud. This, this one's just finishing up. It is such a great plant. It gets a lot bigger than what you see here. Um, it gets to be a full bush. Has those little stars on it. Absolutely just these puff clouds of stars. They're really, really cool. And it's more of a spring bloomer. And it, it, it's one that just, when it's blooming, it, it's just really enchanting. So again, the bloom struck are there. What else do I wanna show you? Lots of hookeras. I told you this in the video before. Hookeras in the middle are gonna be sun lovers. Hookeras way over there, and also some of them that we have in the other greenhouse, are going to be uh, more shade lovers. What else do we have blooming? The perennial geranium. This is at the perennial event. A lot of people were asking about the perennial geranium. And so this is a little bit more of a ground cover. And we have kind of, this one's a little bit more pink. This one's a little bit more purple. This is a no fuss plant. So if you have an area you wanna kind of cover, uh, go ahead and go for it. It likes part shade but we put it in sunnier spots and it does fine. Uh, but usually we have it next to like bigger plants. So those bigger plants provide some shade. Yarrow's always good. These are ready to burst too. These are early too. Yarrow's usually one that we see a lot of in July, but they're really loving the greenhouse right now. Lupine, more of the bloomstrucks. And I think these are endless summer. So these are your original uh, endless summer. Oh, we actually have some flowers in these. These came from downstate. Um, so they're a little farther ahead. Candy Tough, I think I told you about this last time, but it's really in bloom right now. So it's looking really good. Our lilies are crazy. I mean, look at these things. And the stalks are super sturdy, which we're really happy about because we were worried they were growing so fast. We thought, oh no, are we gonna have to stake every single one of them? But every single variety I've noticed has had really sturdy stalks this year. So we're Really thrilled about that. So these are gonna be good purchases for you. And then, what else do we have? The sea holly's cool, it's kind of a thistle looking plant. And that's, this is bigger than what we had in the greenhouse last year in July. So I don't know what's going on folks. Like something is happening with plants. Expect your gardens to be exceptional this year. This one's a cool one, it's orange gnome. When it opens up, it has kind of like a little cross 
shaped orange flower. It's a nice little, little treat. And delphiniums are starting. Delphiniums can be ones that you do need to stake every once in a while. It depends on the variety. We don't have a lot of delphiniums. Oh, some of the sedums. Lots and lots. Look at, okay, if you think about a couple weeks ago when I was in here and I showed you the cone flowers or the echinacea, look at them now. They are ready to give us, look at, oh, we do have color over here. I mean, these things are just doing so well. In fact, I'm probably going to, well, you need to come and buy some of these because I have to space these out. And uh, you're going to save me a lot of work if you take them home and get them in your garden so I don't have to do all the spacing. Let's see, what else do we have? Now, hostas. Our hostas, another one. I don't know what's going on, but the hostas are looking super great this year. I mean, they always look pretty good, but hostas are ones that, hostas and hookahs are two uh, perennials that can get kind of expensive. They're shade lovers for the most part. Um, but we do have an option. If you're looking for a way to cover a shady area with hostas, these here are really a great deal. They're only $6.25. And so they're not super large, but they are going to be this size within a year or two, maybe three. Depends on which, which variety it is. Um, so this is really a, a great way to cover a lot of ground. So you spend $6.25 versus, let's say you're buying one of these other varieties. And I won't pick a proven winner, so I'll pick one of these other ones. I think these here are, oh, how did these sneak in without a price? $21 for this. So just think about it. You're getting more than, you can get three of these for the price of that. Now these are farther along. They're gonna look a lot better this year. They're gonna cover a lot more ground. So these are really good options. But if you're on a budget, think about these three and a half. And that's across the board with, we do have a, a lot of varieties in this size. Same things with the hookahs. We have $7 hookahs. Um, Try to remember where those went. These are the nine dollar. So there's ways of kind of you know instead of spending the sixteen twenty five for uh, one of the bigger ones, if you're patient and you don't mind waiting two or three years for them to get to this size, uh, it's you can always go with the small ones. Let's see what else can I show you. There's the cat's pajamas and the kitten around or is it? I can't remember the two names. They're nepeta. Um, so cat's pajamas and what's it? Cat's meow. Those are the two kinds. This is the, it's kind of in the catnip family. It's not the same. It's a nepeta, which um, they're in the same family, but they're not, it's not a catnip. Um, but it is a fragrant herby type of plant that's really popular in the landscape. It just keeps up send, sending up plant flowers. Bees love it. Um, it's just, it's a pretty easy one. And this variety doesn't uh, a slump in the middle. We do have flocks, creeping flocks in bloom. Okay, I think I've kept you guys long enough, haven't I? I hope you enjoyed the tour. More of the hookahs. Oh, I should show you ground covers because that's another way. If you have a shady spot you're trying to cover, uh, go ahead and you can get things like, this is Red Nancy. You can see it gets its name from the flower color. So that thing will kind of take over. Um, under the benches is where we're keeping this ground cover. So there's Creeping Thyme, which is a good option. I think there's two kinds, Elfin and Magic Carpet. We have a little bit of Sweet Woodruff left. We have some Angelina, which is a stone ore fine or stone crop. So we have the two colors. So you can see this one's a nice limey color. This one is a little more blue spruce looking and it's the name of it is blue spruce. A little bit of ivy, a ivy, little bit of uh, uh, Creeping Jenny. Let's see, a little bit of Winter Creeper. Sedum tricolor. That's got some nice color. A little bit of Inca. More stone crop. And here's the white Nancy. It hasn't, oh, maybe we've got a couple blooms of that. So gets his name because of the white flower, of course. Ah, oh, there's the Veronica. Okay. Well, I hope that everybody enjoyed this little tour. I kind of went above and beyond, or well beyond, all the uh, uh, bare root. Uh, but hey, we open up on Saturday at 9 a.m. We'll be open until, what is it, 3 o'clock that day. And then uh, Sunday, we're open from 11 till 3, and then 9 to 4 on weekdays. And we're open every Sunday in May. So feel free to come by. Lots of stuff for you to see, lots of plants. The annuals are looking really good. So maybe I'll give you a tour of that stuff. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to have time. 
we're getting everything ready. Anyway, I'm rambling now, so it's time for me to go. Thanks, everybody. Uh, hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye.